So we're going to go ahead and go into the lesson here. And the first um, scripture says, Then Job answered to the Lord and said, verse 2, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. The commentary says, He subscribes to the truth of God's unlimited power, knowledge, and dominion to prove which was the scope of God's discourse out of the whirlwind. And therefore, true repentance begins in the acknowledgement of the truth. Anybody have any comments about that? That I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. That's what the New Revised Standard Version says. Mm -hmm. So basically, it ain't nothing in this world that God can't do. Right. Nothing. God knows what you're thinking. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, nothing uh, that you can keep from him. Nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize, you know, under the current situation where we are, where, where Job was coming out of, you know, what we were talking about, and where his friends had, had just kind of like accused him of, because, you know, in the story of saying, um, you know, his friends were, were basically came to him and was like, hey, man, you must have done something against God. Mm -hmm. You need to own up to it, you know what I'm saying, so he can release you of it. And, and you know, and, and by Job telling, letting them know, look, man, I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. I can't even recall anything that I might have done. And, and, and so, um, and at that time, you know, I mean, you know how it is, you know, when you have, when you have your friends and, and, and your friends are coming by and, you know, these are the people, some of the people that you consider your, your close folks, some of the folks that you might tell some secrets to, you might tell some things that you might might not tell some other people. Right. And so for these people to come in, and they're constantly saying, man, you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, man, I didn't do anything wrong. But you, you should know your friend. Right. All right? When, when, when I, I, one of my friends come to me, or one of my, if I tell them I'm going through something, and my, one of my friends come to me like that, they know me from my past that, you know, if, it, it, that, you know I'm going to be truthful to you. The first time, if I did it, I did it. You know, I'm not gonna sit, sit there, and, you know, what I'm saying, and and, and and sit on that lie like that, and, and then keep it going. But and, and they should have known this about Joe. When Joe had said, "Look, man, I had didn't didn't do anything," they kept pressuring. Him. It was almost like you know, sometimes when we, when you you go to court nowadays, you know, by me working in the court system, I see a lot of guys that come to prison. And, you know, what I'm saying, and they'll they'll uh, they'll plead guilty to some stuff that they didn't do, all because they got pressured into the situation. You know, now, and, and you know, and, and, and so they were trying to pressure Job into saying that, that that he had did something wrong, and you know, and and, and basically, you know, Job has started to turn. He has started questioning God, right? And he questioned like, you know, God, you got to give me some type of answer. I need it right now. And God was like, Ho, ho, ho! You need to slow, slow your roll. And so now, Job is like, Job is like, all right, God, I'm sorry. You know, I know that you can do all things. So, you know, I mean, sometimes, like, you know what I'm saying, we get, get at those situations, and even when we get to some situations where, um, or get into some positions where we can't even, where, where, where we're even beginning to, you know, I mean, just being honest, sometimes you, you think about, you know, giving up. Sometimes you think about, you know what, I, I should have went to the club the other night. You know, but you didn't because, you know what I'm saying, you believed, and, you know, you, you believed that God was who he said he was. And, and you know what I'm saying, and, and because he said that he's going to do what he said he's going to do, you believe in that word. And so that's why we continue to do what we do, because we believe, you know, sometimes we get weak, we can't see it. You know what I'm saying, that there's, it feels like there's no end to a situation, but still, God, we, we, you, God still wants us to believe that he's still who he said he's going to be, regardless of it. Because, you know, you never know what the end is going to be or what the end is going to look like. That's right. Mm -hmm. But in here we see here that, that, that he... It's starting to come back to his senses yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he he was way out there in the left field for a while. <laughs> you yeah. know, he was on, you know, he was on that self deal, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he was on a, what you call a pity party. Yeah. And now it, he's starting to come on back in and be like, Well look, now let, let me reevaluate this thing here. Mm -hmm. You know, I know who God is. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still the same God. The song says same God back then, same God right now, he's the right. same. Mm -hmm. I know who he is, and and like you were saying about your about your friends, people should be able to recognize that you are a follower of Christ. That's right. Just had this conversation with Michaela 
on the way to church. She says to me, Mama, I want to know if I can um, buy a shirt that says, I love my hands. Mm -hmm. I said, why would you want to wear a shirt like that? She said, I just want everybody to know that I love them. I said, well, aren't you um, a Christian? Aren't you a follower of Christ? Mm -hmm. She said, yeah. I said, do your friends know that you're a Christian? She said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I looked at Marcus. I said, Marcus, do your friends know that you're a Christian? Marcus said, yeah. I said, well, if your friends already know that you go to church and that you love the Lord and that you follow Christ, mm -hmm. they already know you love your hands. That's right. They already know you love your enemies. Mm -hmm. That comes with the package. That's right. So you don't have to broadcast this stuff. It should automatically yeah. show. Yeah, that's part of the job script. <laughs> that's right. So you don't have to broadcast these things. Mm -hmm. If you are a true right. man or woman or child of God, you don't have to go all out of your way to prove anything to anybody. It's going to show. If they say, let your light so shine, mm -hmm. it's going to shine. So, I'm going to go ahead. <clears throat> But I know that that's true. Uh -huh. But the way the children are today, yeah. and you wonder if they got any training at home, yeah, you're and right. if they well, teaching them about God, mm -hmm. some of them don't even go to church. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. so in a sense, I can see what she's talking about. She, she can express herself and say, I love you even though you don't like me. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to think so many different ways now because mm -hmm. kids are different from what we used yeah. to be. That's true. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, and, we can get away with more too. We can, yeah. we, we can express ourselves more than they can now because I I, I, I can understand what you're saying yeah. because you, kids now you know they can't handle what we handle at work and out here in the world. That's you know right. when, when somebody tell us that okay, I understand that you know what it's through my living, but they don't understand that. Don't so understand. yeah, so when we're in church, you know what I'm saying, and, and we're telling them that Jesus is Lord and, and you know what I'm saying, He's your Savior, that He hung that He died, uh, hung on the cross, um, and He rose on the third day. It's kind of hard for them to go to school and express that and then yeah. catch the catch the persecution behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, because my kids have gone through it. And, yeah. you know, I've mean, seen times where uh, Kiera has stood up for some stuff, man. And, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and shoot, it, it, and she would come home and she was like, man, it's like a, like the whole school don't nobody want to talk to me no more. I said, but Kiera, they're going to respect you more. That's right. They, but I said, they ain't going to just bring, yeah, they, they ain't right. going to just bring anything or any old mess that you thinking that, you know what I'm saying, that you're going to go along with that's it. Right. You know, that, you know what I'm saying? They'll, that you just let them know right then and there that you that you won't gonna just fall for anything. I'm just not that's gonna right. follow y'all in any other way. Yeah, I said, yeah, it hurts. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, as I say, you know, sometimes you got to stand alone. Yeah. That's right. And do you know that's do what's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 you know, and so I see what she's talking about, even though she's living in life. Mm -hmm. Somebody else ain't living in life. And they don't they don't care. That's true. Yeah. And it's it's hard. Like it's hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot different. And because you coming up, it won't no guns and stuff. Mm -hmm. People fall with their fists. Mm -hmm. You know, you met you met each other out, you know, at the park. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, it was a fist fight or something, or, or it was it was bullying, but it still wasn't to the point of where it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, I was saw looking on the news this morning and they had this um, Caucasian man, he was raising this African American girl, and they were bullying her because of the color of her skin. Mm -hmm. And they had posted it all on Snapchat. And he went and made a video and, and posted it all on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He had reached out to the parents. And the parents came back with you know with the N word, you know, it was just it was just going back and forth, so he didn't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So now he set up a, a town like a summit type deal to discuss these issues to try to get it resolved because he feels like it's going to get so far out, mm -hmm. somebody's going to end up getting hurt behind this thing. But well, she's already hurt. Mm -hmm. But you know, but, but the way <laughs> times are now, people are losing their lives over this stuff. Right. So you know, it's it's different times. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's hard. It's different situations now, mm -hmm. and, and things are so so complicated now. Yeah. You know, from the way it used to be. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just like I say all the time. It's almost like right is, well, wrong is right and right is wrong now. You That's know? true. I mean, because 
yeah, I was watching TV yesterday, and, and you know, so I kind of got disgusted with it because I'm sitting there with I had the baby in my arms. Kristen was at the house, and her friend was there, and we watching Nickelodeon uh, or one of them little the children's channel, mm -hmm. and they were advertising some women's lingerie on the kids' channel. Yeah, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, hold on, we just went from from the little Hannah Montana show to showing this naked lady on TV, and it's not like you know. It's, they they don't show lingerie like like they used to show it when you know what I'm saying when, when I was younger. Really, you know what I'm saying they had so much covered up. It really looked like you had a shirt on. I mean, but now they had the little thing on. They had a little, and I'm like, and then they turned it later around. So then, and, and, and it was some lace underwear. And so basically, you just saw everything. everything. And I'm like, and I couldn't grab the remote fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, okay, so what are you what what, what What's, what is acceptable now or you know you know what is acceptable now you know what I'm saying for kids as far as what they're showing and what they're trying to do I mean because I mean you you got like Christian them they're eight years old but then what about all the other little kids that are you know that are younger than them that are you know that, that you can't really I can talk to Christian I'm like hey that's not you know what I'm saying really what and, and she'll you know what I'm saying she'll receive it but what about somebody that's just sitting there looking at something for the first time and that's you know I mean, so, you know, you got to look at, I mean, they, they, they're through TV and, and other stuff that they're changing. They're changing the culture. They're changing that, the, the society from being, um, from being a godless society to, you know what I'm saying, switching it to, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm learning, you know what I'm saying, this sinful stuff straight off the gate. So this is the norm, you know. And, you know, it's just like, even like the music they listen to. Yeah. It was, it was a song that McCain was singing one time. It was a catchy little tune. <laughs> and I kept hearing her sing it. You hit in the mouth. When you sang that song. <laughs> and I don't know what made it. I said, Michaela, come, come in for a minute. And she came in and she sat down on the side of the bed. I said, I'm going to video you. Why don't you sing that song for me? That song I keep hearing you sing. Or she went to sing that song. <laughs> I got about 10 seconds of the song. I couldn't take much more. Mm -hmm. And the song was talking about laying down in a bed. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take much more. So I played it back. And I wanted her to see herself singing this song. Mm -hmm. I said, do you even know what you're saying? Are you listening to what you're saying? And she said, well, the song got a catchy beat. My listening son, the song is hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. The song is hot. I say, it ain't, I say, it's hot. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hot like hell because that's where it's going to send you to. <laughs> you don't stop singing stuff like this because this is of the devil. This is not of God. That's right. I say, you are 10 years old talking about laying down in the bed. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to hear this and it's going to put you in a position you don't need to that's be in. That's right. Because they're going to think she's grown. Exactly. I say, you already don't look like you're 10 years old. Mm -hmm. You look like a teenager. Yeah. You need to be careful about the things mm -hmm. that you say. And that's why it's so important, you know, that we're talking about this, who's in control. We as parents, we have to stay in control. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to do that because we can't be with our children 24 hours, seven days a week. We can't, we can't be there. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for allowing me to hear what she was saying. That's right, to correct it. That's right. To correct it. Now, I haven't heard her singing it anymore. I'm not saying that she didn't sing, sing it anymore, but she knows that it's not acceptable to be singing it. And I think it really caught off guard yeah. once she really listened, you know, once I really broke it down to her. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, so many young girls now are, are being put in positions they don't need to be put in because of something as simple as a song. And then you got other little girls and all y'all running around singing this stuff like it's cheap. And it might be acceptable to some other parents, but it's not acceptable in my household. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, we have to, we, we just got to stay prayed up. Yeah. And we got to ask God for discernment. We got to you know, show us these things. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do the same thing at the house as well. Because I'm hearing them going around. 
like Usher got these songs now. I remember when Usher first came out, Usher was singing Popcorn Love, Popcorn <coughs> Love, and you know what I'm saying, and This Is My Confession, and all this other stuff. But now he got these songs that this talk about you a good kisser, and, and all this other stuff, and you know, and, and, and I'm and I be you know even Sharon she'll catch Carrie them singing the song and, and, and she'll get, do y'all understand what what you're singing do you understand you know what I'm saying the, the realm that you're you're putting yourself into That's right. you know and you know and my girls are the same way they 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 look older than you know what I'm saying than than you know than what they actually are mm -hmm. and uh, you know and, and they constantly do it all the time so you know it, it's a constant battle uh, it for is. us because they got so much you know kid. Kids don't go, we, 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 we say a lot of times, you know, when we, we say, man, I done been through what you've been through, but y'all got, you know, we, we ain't been through what they've been no. through. Not, not even, <laughs> no. because we grew up at a time where if I went down the street and I was doing something wrong, I'd get my tail beat, and then they would call my daddy or my mom and them, and then they would let them know what I'd done, and then I'd get another beat for the same thing when I got home, or, or even or if I didn't get a whooping, my daddy knew about it. That's right. See, but it, it ain't like that now. It's not like that now. And, and so kids are going out here getting away with stuff, doing stuff. And, 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 and if children are smart enough to erase their text messages out of their phone or, mm -hmm. you know, or, or not to allow you to, to, to have their accounts on the Internet, we wouldn't know. Because, I mean, shoot, if, if, we, if I didn't, we, if Sharon didn't go through, um, you know, the kids' phones and stuff like they do, we wouldn't know half the stuff that they're going through unless the teacher called because we have a, a, a relationship with their teachers at school to the point where they can call us for anything and they'll know we'll be at school just like that. Right. And, and they like us because they be like, man, y'all the only parents that we know that do this. Y'all come to school way. and y'all handle business. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. And, and you know, that, that's what you need to do anyway. Yeah. And, 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 and teachers love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because they know they got some support. Uh -huh. Because now nowadays, if a teacher calls home and most parents that, that are young. Yeah, against the teacher. They'll be like, that ain't my child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't know. 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 They don't that ain't my job. No, yeah. no, you did this and all that. Exactly. No, uh uh. Yes, I'll get in the teachers, but if you do something against against my child and, and, and my child was in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. But you know, but when we come to school, we come to school to listen to both sides first. Mm -hmm. Then once we listen to both sides, then we go into attack mode. Mm -hmm. And have and most of the time, one of our children sitting in there and told a lie. <laughs> <laughs> told the tale, <laughs> and so we have to deal with it accordingly. But then there have been some times where the teacher has been wrong, and we have had to side with our children. And so they know that you know if you're right, we gonna we gonna stand with you. If you're wrong, I'm I'm not standing with you. Why you know what I'm saying? Why you in your mess? That's right. You know I'm not gonna condone that's that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what my mom always told me. She said, "I love you, but if you're wrong, I'm gonna let you know you're wrong. That's right. I will not uphold you." Mm -hmm. and, you know, and she still stands by that. <laughs> Today, she still stands by that. Yeah. You know, but this right here just lets us know that the enemy wants us to think that he is in control. That's right. Mm -hmm. That he holding you know, all the cards. That's why so many things happen. Uh, you know, it's like it's like we're in a, a like we're looking through a barrage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like a it's like a, a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just like walking through the through the um, grocery store. This morning, I was looking at they they had on the on the um one of the newsstands they had um you know they had Bruce Jenner dressed up like a woman photoshopped with all this lipstick and somebody transformation to a woman. <laughs> but this is news. Uh, it, this is news. Mm. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? And people are stopping and reading, buying this stuff. Mm -hmm. And instead of them learning more about Jesus Christ and learning more about their eternal life and what's going to help them along the way, mm -hmm. people are living for right now. Right. Mm -hmm. For this moment. They're not looking for, for um, like we talked about, like um, 401k packages and things like that or, or, or um, you know, um, retirement. Mm -hmm. where we have something where we can live off of later. People are not investing, I should say. They're not investing in the right things in life right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're getting, they're, they want, like, uh, they want a, a quick refund check. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> they want a quick refund. Mm -hmm. They want to live for today. Living for the day. Mm -hmm. Living for the moment. Living for the minute. But don't have any security or anything for tomorrow. 
or down the line. That's right. The enemy wants to make us think that he's in control. He wants us to think that there is no God. He wants us to think that Jesus is not alive. And That's well. right. That's what the enemy wants us to think. But no matter what goes on in this world, whatever, whatever kind of situation that appears before us, I know that God is still in control. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he created it. He created this world. Mm -hmm. Which means he ultimately still has control. That's and right. whatever the enemy is doing right now, it's just for a short period of time. That's right. That's right. When he wants to stop stuff. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sometimes he wants us to go through things. Sometimes you can go through things and it bring you out better. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or worse. Mm -hmm. You know. That's right. But sometimes that's a decision you have to make. Mm -hmm. You give up that, you know, you make your own choice. You know. You know, just like the, the lesson that um, Pastor Ash uh, talked about last week, he was talking about how why are so many things in the world happening that seem like that we're that people they go on like they mm -hmm. get blessed. Or, or they don't get punished. Mm -hmm. But as I was reading on into the commentary, it says that we should worry about the things that go on in the world. Mm -hmm. It said that, that while you're in the world, so you still got a chance to, to get yourself together. That's why mm -hmm. so, why things go on so long, because see, God is still a caring God. He still, he still, he still loves his children, mm -hmm. and in spite of whatever they're going, whatever they're doing, he's still wanting them to turn around. So I feel like he's still giving them an opportunity to get themselves right. Mm -hmm. Now some of them just don't do it. Sure. Just everybody's not gonna make it in. That's right. They're just not gonna do it. That's right. mm -hmm. But the commentary said that, but once they enter the grave. Mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> Jesus. Come on. That stuck with me right there. Uh huh. So once they enter the grave. This is a done deal. So once that tongue gets glued to the top of your mouth, mm. and then the blood starts starts running warm in your veins, and mm. your heart be stops beating. Mm -hmm. It says that. Later on down the line, the commentary says that you'll be eaten up by worms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you will be you'll be like waste. Mm. You'll be nothing. Mm -hmm. You won't even matter. That's right. Your existence didn't even matter to the people that was that that you that you did so many wrongs to. You'll be worse. And worse off than they were here on earth. Mm -hmm. That's right. And when you die, that's a done deal. That's right. You have no more chances. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's it. Yep. So when I read that thing that said that when you enter the grave, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's 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 it. I'm gonna tell you that stuck <laughs> with me. <laughs> uh huh. That stuck with me because there's some folk out here think that you know they got time. Mm hmm. And and, 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 and and when you and when you get into that situation where you where you have no more time left, then what? Some people just don't realize mm -hmm. they they enjoying themselves, you know. That's right. And, and they're not thinking about mm -hmm. you know what might happen to them. So you know it can be just like that, you know. So so you better stop mm -hmm. doing it. But I, I think it just it just hit me that when I got that visual, mm -hmm. you know when you see when you see dead creatures and you see dead, you know different things that, that's decayed and mm -hmm. when you look at stuff like that you think of how the, the, the how the and the ants and how these 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 um, animals and stuff how they're crawling out. This is what you will be worth. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing. 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 But, but you also got to look at, but just imagine, you know, when you walk around, if, if God would really allow you to just walk around in the spirit, and you walking around in Walmart, and you, you see, or you walking around, just walking around the, 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 the area, you start to see the dead spirits. Imagine how that would look. Mm. Mm. 
you walking around, you in the spirit, so you looking at everybody through spiritual eyes, and you, and you mm. come on. <laughs> I mean, because you, because you see, and, 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 and the thing is, you, you would be surprised at some of the people that you feel. <laughs> yeah. That you think are on the lower side and really not on the lower side. Yeah. You know, I mean, but, 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 this, but, is okay. why, but, but, but this is why he does not allow us to mm -hmm. see things like that because mentally we can't handle stuff. Yeah, like because that. it would be it would be a horrifying oh, sight. Can you imagine what it would look like? Right. You yeah. would not be able to handle that. That's like the walking day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> walking watching the movies and you see mm -hmm. people just walk yeah. because you have no life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And and the real reason, you know, the reason why white people do what they do because because of that lack of relationship with God. You know, I don't, you know, I, I, I was once, you know, some one of those type of people where, you know, I felt like, you know what, I was in the club on Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, all Saturday night, and slept all day Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and that was a recurring thing. But, you know, I'm, I've always been one of those type of people where if I keep going to a, through a certain thing or I keep going through a certain phase and I keep seeing the same people over and over again, I get sick and tired of seeing you. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so, you know, for me, after I kept going to the club and I'm singing in all these places, I'm seeing the same people over and over again. Mm -hmm. I got tired of it. So I just, you know, stopped it. But then for me, I had to go and find something else, you know what I'm saying, to fill that void. Right. But, you know what I'm saying, it took me a long time to the point where I got to, to the point where I, I got, you know, yeah. you the one that filled that void. But so you got to look at all these people that are running around here in the world that are doing the things that they're doing, you know, dibbling and dabbling in homosexuality, mm -hmm. continuously, you know, people that, that, that drink. You know, there was a man... Uh, that that got a DWI here in Wake County and then was in Harnett County the other day killed that family. Jeez. He drinking and driving. You know what I'm saying? That's a problem. You know what I'm saying? See, he, he you know what I'm saying? Using the alcohol and drugs and different stuff like that because they looking for they looking for Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's right. They looking for that fulfillment, that spot. You know, there's there's always because if you ever know, I mean, I, I've made I've been in situations where you know what I'm saying I made money, but still you know what I'm saying I always had that drive to keep going to the point where. There, there was a point in my life that I hadn't, I didn't factor in sleeping because I was trying to make money, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and but, you know, you you'll never anything the things of this world. You no, no, no matter how much of it that you want, no matter how much of it that you, that, you know, what I'm saying that you want to re retrieve of it, you'll never feel that spot or that board that that, that only Jesus can feel. Yeah. That only you know, what I'm saying he he's going to take care of or, or, or provide you that comfort, you know. Well. You know, I was one of the ones. I, I used to go to the club with my friends, but we we didn't go to the we we didn't go to um, the regular club. We would always go to the sports bar. We would always go uh, to the bow ties and just uh, places like that. You uh -huh. know, I would always go with my with my with my um, supervisors from the job, even in the, the owners of the company. Mm -hmm. I would always go with them. You and get, I, you huh, get drink. <laughs> no, I, I never drank. Uh -oh. I, never was, I never was a drinker. Uh -oh. okay. But I was sick and I would always hold everybody's pocketbook. Uh -huh. And that's what I did. Uh -huh. I always felt out of place. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that I too. always went. That too. Yeah. So really, mm -hmm. I was still guilty by association because I was still in the place. Yeah. I was still home. You, you might as well got out there on the floor and I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt so out of place every time I would go. So finally, one one weekend, my cousins um, said, well, Lisa, I need you to um, drive us one night. So we're going to go to the movies. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So we're going to see my sister. I hadn't seen my cousin in a long time. And so I drove and went to a house and um, I said, what time the movie start, you know? And she said, um, we decided we ain't going to the movie, so we gonna go to the club. Oh, Lord. Club? <laughs> what club? I didn't So we driving, we almost in Virginia. Uh-oh, y'all went to Mel Joe. We out in the middle of nowhere. One path to go in, one path to go out. And it was so bad, they uh -huh. had barbed wire, the electric fence, all the way around. Y'all at me, Joe. <laughs> we was in a mess. Do you hear me? <laughs> so we got in there, my cousin, she decided she wanted to get on top of the table. She wanted to dance. It was so embarrassing. Uh -huh. Everybody in the, in the car drunk. I had just joined the gospel choir. Well, what a child. <laughs> Just join the choir. <laughs> I had to sing that next morning. <laughs> I didn't have no cell phone at the time. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I kept saying, y'all, come on, let's go. I got to go. I got to go to church in the morning. See, it, it will convict you. The Spirit will convict you mm -hmm. when you know that you're wrong. That's right. You know, it, it, will, it will work on you. It will work on you. And so I think about 4.30 that morning, we pulled up in Franklin. We were living in Franklin at that time. I left them in the car. They were drunk. I came on that house. Mama came out and she said, she said, everything okay? I said, Mama, I said, long as I live, I ain't never going back to that another club. <laughs> she said, I was thinking about time you come on in. <laughs> and she didn't let you know I've never been back. Mm -hmm. I've never been back. And um, they came on in, you know, they, she made them get out the car. They, they were all laid out on the floor, in the floor. And I was just looking, you know, this is all you do. And, and, and the same people mm -hmm. that were doing that stuff then are still doing it yeah. now. And the thing about it, it gets worse. Hey, for real? It gets worse. They still do it. They still, it. Mm -hmm. they still, when you mention Christ to them, uh -huh. I ain't trying to hear it. Uh -huh. Don't hear it. They don't want to hear it. Right. And they know Christ. You, tell me something. Why you been doing that yesterday? Did you come on here, friend? Did the club up there, your friend? Did you come what did you do? But that was in my time, so that was the one thing then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I think back down this way with Parker's in. Yeah. With Parker's uh -huh. back down this way in Franklin. Yeah. But um, yeah, they it, it was a mess. The same people, and then they had they caught me one time before. I had got enough in, but then last time they had me out of that field on that ball wire. That was it. That was it. Yeah, but they didn't the take, yeah, take me down there to that thirty plus. Oh lord! <laughs> and we were showing the show, <laughs> and it was so hot in there I couldn't breathe. It was so hot. And I kept telling my cousin, I said, why do y'all want to be in a place like this? I said, you know, it's, it's unsafe. Because Folks can rob you, you know, you, you, they, you know. Yeah, when, when you in, in, in your sin and in your mess like that, it's comfortable being around other people because being out other people that's doing what you're doing makes it okay. Well, they can tell you, I went to the car. Mm -hmm. I sat in that car for four hours. <laughs> I waited for them to come out. They would have got left. Well, I was driving somebody in a car, uh -oh. so I had to wait. Yeah. But I knew that I was not supposed to be in that type of stuff. I, I knew a long time ago I wasn't supposed to be mm -hmm. in that type of stuff. God had been calling me a long time. Right. I just wasn't ready to submit, you know. But you can't outrun God. I don't yeah. care how much you try to outrun the situation. Like they say, he's going to let you know who's in control. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it, it just kind of like bring it back to the story too. Even even Job himself had had went to that point. That's why we we are where we now, where God has shown up and He's began to he 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 convicted Job first. You know, he 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 he, uh, he convicted Job first to let him know, man, how how is it that you can allow them to, you know, because Job is at a point now where he's 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 at a, at a point of repentance mm -hmm. again, even though he 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 had still continued to say, you know what. God is going to do it. God is going to do it. And so that, that's how, how, how most of us have, have been at, at that point where we begin to come, come to Christ too. That's how you learn. I mean, really, it, it, it's nothing wrong with it as long as you learn from it and never do it again. You know? Right, because if I had not had that terrible, to me, that was a terrible experience mm -hmm. because I had made a commitment to God that I was going to serve him. Mm -hmm. And I had joined the choir. And it was so funny because my mom them didn't belong to Wooden at the time. They belonged to New Bethel at my grandmother's church. And um, I was the first one that joined Wooden mm -hmm. by myself. And uh, my grandfather, he was the only assistant pastor there until the, the assistant pastor that's there now. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I just wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, and I did. I grew tremendously there at Wooden. But I had to take that first step. That's right. I had That's to step right. away from my friends. I had to come away from my family. Mm -hmm. I had to step out of the norm, you know, and proclaim Jesus Christ and That's let right. everybody know that, you know, what I was doing in the, in the past, that ain't working. Mm -hmm. I got to do something different. And whatever I do, it's got to make a difference, not only in my life, but it's got to make a difference 
difference in my children's lives mm -hmm. because they are following me. That's right. And even though, you know, you know, I would go out, I would, I would, you know, sometimes I would go out, whatever, you know, they didn't ever really see anything, but if you ain't at home at 11 o'clock at night, your children know you ain't at home at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you understand yeah, what I'm saying? because they probably still up. <laughs> they know. Why? They probably look. Yeah, they up. They probably still up they watching know. TV, waiting for you to come so they can run back there and jump in the bed. Like they this. know. <laughs> and that's like Mama always said. She always told me. She said, every pose I ain't sleep. Mm -hmm. They know. So, you know, like I said, we, you know, if you want to do something, you know, do it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do it for the Lord and, yeah. and do it to make a difference, not only in your life, but do it so it, it can encourage somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the one thing too that you know that I always give God praise for, because I, I thank Him for never allowing allowing me to really cross the line. Mm -hmm. You know, never allowing me to, to go too far across the line to the point where you know what I'm saying that, that He couldn't reel me in. Anyway, I had opportunities or been in positions where where, uh, where people had offered like heavy drugs and stuff like that, and, and you know I just never did it. Um, you know, and, and even you know what I'm saying been in positions where I had opportunity to, to sell drugs on, on, on different levels, but then never went too far with it to the point where I could I crossed the line and then I had to regret that I crossed the line. So, you know, that's why I was like, man, God, I thank you for not taking me down that road. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's amazing, you know, how he, you know, has his, his protection around his people. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, it's the same thing, you know, I, I never did it, mm -hmm. but I was around it. Yeah. And when I got married, and I got married, like you know, I got married young. But I was um I graduated when I was eighteen, but I was I was um gonna have a baby when I was seventeen mm -hmm. in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And I moved in with their daddy the day before graduation. So I really didn't know much about him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know much about being a mother. I was a child myself. Mm -hmm. He was nine years older than me. But he was he had a different set of friends than I had. They drank, they smoked, they 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 was they was creating this stuff, mm. the heavy stuff. So yeah. I had never even been seen any of that stuff. I didn't even know what the stuff was, but I'd never seen it. So you know, I thank God for that protection because see, I could have been pulled into that, That's right. not knowing what it was, but by Him being so much. In control, I should say, because really he was really in control. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm living in his house, I ain't working. Right. You know, he in control. Mm -hmm. So you know, I just thank God for for protection. And like Amen. you said, because mm -hmm. we, we we could all of us really could have been in some stuff we really didn't have no business being right. in, much deeper than what we were in. Mm -hmm. But through God's grace and mercy. He still lets us know That's that right. he's in control. Mm -hmm. All right, great lesson today. So we're gonna have um, the kids gonna come up. Um, pretty much.
we had four children today, and our teacher was Mrs. Rule, and we talked about um, what James said about living your life and to live it to the fullest by your law, and and to maybe go to every expensive restaurant in the world before dying. <laughs> But at first, you gotta get the money out of the fish mouth. <laughs> <laughs> then camera got the script. Fill <laughs> off means y'all live once for God. <laughs> uh, we read Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 30. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither saw, so, near, nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you would take the thought can add to his stature one cubit, if ye then be not able to do that thing, which is what least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Amen. Uh, this morning we talked about uh, who's in control. Uh, we were actually coming from uh, Job was 42 verses 1 through 10. And uh, basically what uh, those uh, scriptures were uh, basically discussing was Job was uh, being rebuked by God and, and he was at a place of repentance uh, with God. But then, you know, God was also kind of, and, and we were basically just discussing how, <clears throat> we were basically just discussing how how uh, just understanding who God is, understanding that when we're going through situations, you know, no matter what we're going through, how hard it get, how uh, how bad the situation may look, that we have to continue focusing on God and, and trust and believe that God is going to bring us out of the situation. Um, we also talked in class, had great discussion about how um, just understanding what you know, as opposed to what we went through when we were children, uh, we were just understanding that, that that kids nowadays, you know, what I'm saying they go through so much more. Um, you know, through TV, through music, uh, songs, uh, going to school, just how, how hard it is, you know, for them to really be able to profess, you know, that they're Christians. It, it, it's really hard to, to be the one to stand out when everybody else is doing everything else. Um, and, but once again, just continuing to, to instill in them that, that God is the one that's doing that. God is in control of everything. And he's the one that's going to bring us out. Amen. Alright. Is everybody feeling good this morning? Alright, come on, let's clap our hands for the Lord. For everything that we were allowed to hear, see, discuss, talk about all the projects that we worked on. Amen. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and, and release it. Uh there's all the children. This, there you go. There's all, all, all the children. Do y'all have y'all scripture in and, and y'all prayer this morning like Pastor Eric asked? All hands raised, everybody got their scripture, their, their scripture in their prayer, because you might get called on this morning. Amen? All right, well, let's stand to our feet. Let's pray out of uh, Sunday school, and then we'll, we'll come back promptly at 11.15. Amen? All right, Father God, we thank you this morning, Lord. We, we thank you for allowing us to hear your word today, God. We thank you for allowing us to come and, and really be able to break your word down, God, and get true revelation from it, Lord God. We thank you for allowing it, uh, us to, to be able to, for you to just explain it so that we can apply it to our daily lives, God. We just thank you right now, Lord. God, we ask that each and every one that's in this place, God, you add a, a very 
special blessing uh, to them, Lord God. We thank you for them pressing out their way. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.